Welcome everyone to this week's episode of the Amazon Files brought to you by Mommy Income. I am Kristen Ostrander. And I am Amy Fearman. Welcome to the Amazon Files Live. We're glad you could join us. We want to share part two of this amazing series that we're doing on how to make more profit in your Amazon business. And today we're jumping into Kristen's comfort zone. Last week we did talk to all about organization. If you missed it, it's available on our website. You can go and um, check out the podcast page. You can hit the link to last week's show. But we're going to be talking in Kristen's comfort zone. We're talking about knowing your numbers. And guys, this is not just budget, budget, budget. We've got so much more in this show for you because it is super important. Because if you don't know that you're being profitable, how are you going to increase your profit? So we're here to help you take that next step to understand your numbers so you can be more profitable in your business. Yeah, this is our series, how to make more profit in your business. And of course, we're going to talk about numbers. But before we get to that little housekeeping here, if you are brand new to Zoom, welcome. If you're brand new to the Amazon Files, welcome. We're so glad you're here. Your viewership and listenership means everything to us, and we do our best to give you the best information possible. But it doesn't stop at this show. You want to make sure that you're subscribed to our email list because we got a little secret for you tomorrow. We are releasing something cool that is out of our video vault for the first time in over a year. And if you're not on the email list, you're not going to get it. So tonight is the deadline for that email list. I mean, you can join anytime, of course, but if you're not joined by tonight, you're going to miss that. So go to mommyincome.com slash subscribe so that you can subscribe to our email list so that you can get special things. Now I got to tell you just it's secretive. We can't tell everything all the time, but we are doing something tomorrow that we don't normally do and it's going to run for a few days. And so you want to make sure that you're in on that uh, promo that's going on tomorrow. So enough about that. And also if you are new joining us tonight, we want to invite you to be part of our Facebook community. If you head over to mommyincome.com slash join us with the code word part two, we will ask you a few questions and let you in the group so you can get your questions answered on a regular consistent basis by not only us but other people who are in the group we have a ton of great knowledgeable sellers who've been doing this for a while so come in get your questions answered so we can help you grow your amazon business all right so yeah mommyincome.com slash subscribe to get on that email list mommyincome.com slash join us for the code word for on our facebook group now how do you want to make more profit in your business? We are going to talk about money. Yay. Who doesn't love money? Isn't that why you're in business? So we're in business to make money. And of course we want you to increase your profit zone on Amazon and any other business that you're in really. And the first thing that you want to look at, of course, when you're talking about making more profit is looking at how you spend such money. Um, so you've got, you've got to ask yourself, am I even making a profit? Yeah. And the, the, what we hear from so many people is like, so are you making a profit in your business? And they're like, huh? What? I have no idea. Or they guesstimate it. They're like, yeah, I'm making a profit. I get a disbursement every week. Who here is that they are making a profit because they get a disbursement from Amazon every week? Is that your, your gauge as to whether or not you're profitable in your business? Um, we're going to help you take a step out of that because honestly, you can be getting a disbursement every two weeks from Amazon and not be making a profit in your Amazon business. Look at Toys R Us, for example, a multi-billion dollar company at one point. I don't know if they made billions or not. That's like Amazon and, and you know, like Apple or something, but multi-billion, million dollar business Toys R Us was, but guess what, you guys, they weren't making a profit. They were losing money because their advertising was bad and they couldn't bring anybody into the store. Their prices were too high. They couldn't keep up. So even a company like that, that has multi-locations, makes a bunch of money, they were in the negative and they had to close their doors because they just weren't profitable. We don't want that to happen to you. And so we are going to give you some steps to take specifically for Amazon, but this can work even in your personal budget when you're looking around um, to make more profit. So the first step is knowing if your business is profitable or not is your budget. I oh, know this big, huge, fun, sexy word that no one likes to talk about except me because I'm nerdy is budget. What is your budget? And in order to, to, to lay out your budget first, so I can hear some of you already going, I don't have a budget. I'm broke. I've been there. I've <laughs> been, been there. there. Been there and done that, right? We've both been kind of in the negative before and just trying to figure that out. But when it comes to your business, that is the least, the last thing that we want to do. But the first thing we want to do is know 
what your budget is, first of all, in order to get to a profit zone, the first thing you need to keep track of is your expenses, both fixed and variable. Now, before you guys start getting your pens and burning your hands on fire for all this, we have a profit building workbook that goes along with everything we're talking about with budget and knowing your numbers and all this kind of stuff. It's not really show notes. It's actually what we call our profit building um, workbook. So, and it's absolutely free. You can go download that at mommyincome.com slash profit now, and you can get your profit building workbook. So we're going to cover not everything that's in there, but like the nuts and bolts of that so that you can kind of get a good handle on it, but get the workbook. You guys, it's something that will extremely benefit you in your Amazon business. I want to say that this step in your Amazon business is a vital piece to future success. If you are trying to grow an Amazon business and don't have a grasp on your basic numbers, your expenses and your income, you're really going to struggle to be able to grow and we want to be able to help you grow past us, honestly. Like, that's what we want to see our students doing. We want to take what we teach you and just fly. And so we, this is an essential part. So don't glaze over it. Don't be fast forwarding your podcast or flipping through the YouTube channel to go, when do they stop talking about budgets? Because honestly, guys, this is super duper important. We want you to be able to take that next step. Whether And if you're starting out, you want to start with a budget. If you only have $500 to spend, you don't want to spend it on all the fancy tools, gadgets, and gizmos and have zero left to spend on inventory. So one of the things that's in the profit workbook that we, that we want to talk about within your budget is two different kinds of expenses. So a lot of people talk about expenses and there's just this big, huge pile of expenses and you want to lump them all together. But all, not all expenses are created equal. Um, you have variable and fixed expenses. So a, an example of like a, a, a fixed expense would be something that's like the same every single month that you have on a monthly basis. So although the number might be variable, like your electric bill might be $100 this month and 90 the next month or something, that's still a fixed cost. It's something that comes reoccurring all the time. So those are your fixed um, expenses that you have. Um, the number might vary a little bit. The variable is one of those things that are like one-time purchases that you might have to upgrade your computer at some point. You might have a one-time fee that's not renewable for say you buy a Chrome extension or an app for your phone or you know some sort of piece of equipment. That would be a variable expense. So it's not something that's reoccurring all the time, but it's something that still costs you money in your business. So one of the first things we ask you to do is list any and every expense that you have and put them in two categories, variable versus fixed. Because at that point, um, for, so at that point that you know, okay, these is, this is what my business is costing me. A lot of times people forget about the variables because they know, okay, I have this subscription. I buy this, this, and this every month, or I pay for inventory lab, and I pay for merchant words, and you know that's a certain amount of money per month. But then the one-time Chrome extension that they bought, they forgot to write off because it was this one-time fee, and you don't realize that that's part of your profit. So you're not profiting money that you're spending to invest in your business. It's good education, and we want you to do that. But that's not profit. That's something that you're spending as an expense. So you want to make sure that you're kind of putting those variable versus fixed costs in there. And one note that I'll, I'll put in there that I know isn't in the workbook is to one of the things that I did when I went through this initially was to sit down and look at your credit card statements or your bank statements to see where you spent your money over the past three to six months. So you can see where those variable expenses come in, those things that you forgot about, those things that you may pay for once a year, once every couple of months. Those are something that if you have, if you're paying for inventory once a year at $480, you still have to factor that expense out over the course of 12 months. Because if you don't, you're going to get a bill at the end of the year and go, oh man, how am I going to pay that one? So you want to make sure that you're paying attention to all of those expenses. I know that looking at my statements was a really big help for doing that. Yeah. And of course, we're not even going to go over the budget basics because I want me to make sure that you guys have um, you know, you're, we're not even going to go there. You guys already have your business and your personal separate, right? Right. Okay. We're not even going to go there. I know you guys already are legitimate. You've separated your personal, you're not using, you know, your bank card at Starbucks, to, you know, and you know, going out to lunch with that. And then also buying inventory. Like we're not doing that. And if you don't know what we're talking about and you're just getting started with your Amazon business, we talk in depth about this in the first module in Start FBA Today, which talks about all the parts of how to set up your business the right way from the ground up. 
Okay. The next start FBA start FBA today.com to grab that. Start FBA today.com. If you do, if you haven't started your Amazon business, it's a great place to start. It's like beginner's boot camp, kind of. You know, you want to go in there and it shows you everything that you need to know. Okay. So the next thing you want to do is find your break even. So once you realize what all your expenses are, like Amy said, going through your bank statements for the past, you know, I say a year, you can do six months if you want, but you don't want to miss anything. You've got to find your break even. A lot, everyone skips this part. They're like, oh, I know what my expenses are and I know what I'm spending. So they skip this break even. I have this break even in my head. Well, not for my Amazon business anymore because I can't possibly keep all those numbers in my head at this point. I have a spreadsheet for that. But like, for example, in mommy income, like I always, we have lots of expenses that we have and I keep this break even in my head because I know this is what we need to do to just break even. That means we're not making anything, but we're not losing anything. You never want to lose anything, but it, it, you know, things can happen, but you have this break even. So that is with all of your variable and fixed costs, double check with your bank statements and figure that out. And then this is how much money you need to make just to stay in business and pay your bills. Okay. So that's your break even. And then you want to set up yourself with like a percentage plan. So everybody asks Amy and I all the time, how do you, what do you do with your disbursement? You get this disbursement and you know, as it grows, like what am I supposed to do with it? And what we will not tell you is to invest every dime back into inventory. You don't want to be inventory poor. That means your business has no money. It has all this inventory. If something were to happen, the only liquidatable asset you have is inventory. That's not exactly what you want. We want to make sure that you have what you need. I want to ask, can you guys hear me really well? Because I've got people telling me that they can't hear me as well. Um, I know that I just adjusted my settings. So let me know if you can hear me better than you could before. I, you sound fine to me. Okay. So, I mean, I'm okay a little better, but you guys just turn it up a little maybe. Um, you know, if it seems a little bit farther away. Uh, it's hard to adjust some of these settings while we're live on here. So one of the things that, the way that Amy and I break down, um, you know, our Amazon disbursement when it comes in is the best way to do this because your disbursement is variable um, is to break it down by percentage. And again, this is in the workbook. So we're not going to belabor the point and don't feel like you have to write down crazy numbers, but it's a percentage point. So you want to take off the top, you know, you get, say you get a thousand dollars from Amazon. It's a disbursement. And of course, next week or two weeks from now or whenever it is you get paid, it might be $700 or $1,700. So that's kind of a variable thing. And because you have a variable income, not like you get your steady nine to five paychecks always the same or a salary or something, because it's variable, you want to work on percentages because um, you want to still keep your business steady. You want to keep your investment steady. You want to pay yourself steady. So now when you use that, you want to make sure that you are... Um, breaking that down into percentages. So an example of percentages would be like, we spend 65% of this disbursement on uh, reinvesting in inventory. And then we spend, we have 25% that's considered profit. So it's 25% you're paying yourself, your own personal pay, your own salary. And then you've got maybe 5% for uh, education, another 5% for taxes. Yes, taxes, your legitimate business, you're gonna have to pay those. Um, your tax, bracket is going to be different than mine. It's going to be different than Amy's. So you want to make sure that, you know, that's something you consult your CPA over, your husband, your spouse, your wife, whoever, and figure out what that's going to look like for everyone's family is different. But you want to set aside money for taxes because you will be paying them. Ask Amy. <laughs> I just got so thrown under the bus. No, that wasn't throwing under the bus. That was just more of like, a headache that you're going through because it is a headache and there's a variety of reasons for headaches that I'm dealing with with taxes but the reality is you want to have a plan and a process in place um let's just say I grew too fast and had some headaches that went along with it um so we don't want you to have the struggles this is a this is not gonna this is not a belabored task guys this is a maybe an hour max to spend sitting down and doing this you could do it in four 15 minute hustles to get this information down we put we put lines in you to fill, fill everything out. This is not like, this is a workbook. We want you to go and write information into it so you can actually see where you are and where this can, like where your numbers actually line up. Because we're going to give you some strategies in a little bit on how to increase your profit with knowing your numbers. And in order to take some of those strategies and put them in place, you need to take this step to know that break even point. Yeah. So once, you know, you have your break even point and then you have, you've got to break yourself down into percentages because we know that that varies at, at times, especially being more Q4 heavy, where a lot of people on Amazon make more money 
um, between October, November, and December, um, you want to make sure that you're allocating for that, especially if it's something that you want to turn from a side hustle into a full-time business, you need to realize where the balance of your income is. And so when it comes to budgeting, you want to make sure that you're doing that. So what the other thing, remember, the workbook, mommyincome.com slash profit now, and you're gonna get your profit building workbook, and it's gonna give you all this information, even examples for you to follow, to break down your own percentages and see what those look like. You wanna pay yourself, reinvest in your business, pay your taxes, and education. We cannot tell you how much is important to get to continual education. Amazon's changing. All these apps, all the software, there's a lot more tools each and every day that we can use. We want to make sure that we're staying on the up and up with our education. This is why we bring you fresh content every single week because we want to make sure you're in the know about how to run your business profitably. That's what we're here for. So you want to make sure that you're using all of those things. So now let's talk about taking this, this next step is one of the things that we hear from people all the time is Amazon takes an entirely too much in fees. Honestly, they take a set, they take a percentage and they do a whole heck of a lot of work for it that I don't want to do. So I'm willing to pay those fees. But one of the things that if you are selling lower margin items or less expensive items, you will find is that the profit to oh gosh, I'm gonna screw it up now. Um, the profit to fee ratio is profit to, higher. The profit to fee ratio is a lot higher. If you sell a ten dollar item versus a fifty dollar item. The same, uh, the percentage of fees is much greater on a $10 item than it will be on a $50 item. Because it, some of the fees are set in stone and some of them are variable depending on category and depending on size and weight and things like that. For more information on that, you can visit Seller Central and look at, um, you know, their, their fees for selling. I don't have them all memorized and size and category and all that kind of stuff. But our average, uh, ask me how I know because I keep track of this stuff, our actual average of Amazon fees versus sales is 37%. Um, they take a lot, and yeah, we know that. And so people sometimes say, you're crazy for selling on Amazon. They, they take so much money in fees, it's just robbery. Except they store and ship and handle customer service and returns. I never have to deal with a non-paying customer like eBay. I never have to deal with someone telling me, oh, this didn't fit right, I don't like it. Just Amazon takes care of it. I literally ship stuff into FBA. I don't have to worry about it after that. So the storage, the shipping, the packaging, all that kind of stuff, I'm happy to outsource to Amazon. So one of the strategies that you can implement, talking about knowing um, how you spend your money, is looking at how you're buying your inventory. Are you buying all low dollar, dollar store items that you have a smaller markup on, and you're still paying those $1 and $2 fees that you pay on a, on a $10 item that you also pay on a $50 item? Or you, can you look at increasing your ASP, which is your average selling price, one of the things that we've seen, it's happened in both of our businesses, and we see it happen with our students as well. As soon as you make that, even a, even a couple dollar jump, um, we've made it, I've gone from $14.95 as an average selling price to $29.95, and that jump is huge. Um, it did not happen overnight, I will say that, but being able to make that adjustment incrementally over time, you will see profit back in your pocket because that ratio between fees and profit will be better for you. Well, and what do you do to increase your ASP? You bundle, of course. This is the number one way that Amy and I have increased our ASP. Year over year, for three years in a row, I've seen my ASP go from here to here to here. Your average selling price, why does it make a difference? Like we just said, the percentage of fees. If you're selling a $10 item and you might make $2 profit because Amazon's taking a whopping 48% instead of 37% based on size and shape and money, uh, you know, increasing that ASP with bundles, making multi-packs, making, you know, one of my favorite bundles I keep asking someone to make and they haven't made it yet is like making a outfit set for an eight-year-old girl that's like five outfits in a row that I can just buy. I put my money in and just send me five outfits. <laughs> I don't want that rotating box subscription stuff that they have. I just want to look and be like, here's five outfits that will fit her, send them to me and then I don't have to go shopping. Um, so yeah, increase to that. Instead of buying one outfit and you're making, you know, 10 or $12 on it, send me five outfits so you could probably make $40 on it, you know, or 50 or 60 in one fail swoop. That's one package. That's one time. It's, it's better to increase your ASP in the long run because time is money. And I have some math for you, but I do want to caution you. 
Uh, just because something is a higher priced item doesn't automatically make you more money. You still need to pay attention to your ROIs and your margins. This is very important. Just because your item costs $100, don't think you're automatically going to make more money on it because it costs $100. And that, that is true. So pay attention to how much you're spending, how much the fees are on it. I actually, I will throw myself under the bus to send a bundle in. Now part of this is me not paying attention to the size of one of the components. And I'm currently making about $3 on a $30 bundle. Ouch. That's what oversized fees will do to you. This is why it's important to pay attention to your numbers so that you know before you decide to create said bundle that you know all the sizes of all of the items. So you know what the fees will be on those things. Now, of course, when you're making a listing, first of all, if you want to know more about wholesale bundles and what Amy and I do, 100% um, of our businesses, 99.5% of our businesses, wholesale bundles. We buy stuff from wholesalers, we bundle it together in neat, cool packages, send it to Amazon as a bundle. You can go to mommyincome.com slash system and find out more about our wholesale bundle system. It is our best seller. Everyone's loving it. People are making bundles and killing it. And that's one of the reasons we teach that is because we were looking to up our game. You know, as you grow, you go through growing pains. And then what used to work two years ago isn't working anymore. And so you need to do something different. And so what we found with wholesale bundles is that we can constantly do different things within the wholesale bundle um, business model. So I can do things in the home category. I can do things in the toy category. I can do things in health and beauty and accessories and different ways to create bundles. They're still wholesale bundles, but I can take it across multiple different categories and different, you can go so many ways with it. I've got more ideas than I have time or money, but you know, it's one of those things. So thinking about that. Okay. Back to oh, the Hold on, before Kristen gets to her numbers, we forgot to tell you that we actually do have show notes for the show on top of the workbook. Um, we wanted to give you those because some of the stuff that we're going to go into is going to make my head spin. So we wanted to make sure you had it written down so you could look through it as well. So if you go to mommyincome.com slash the number two, just the number two, um, that will get you the show notes for tonight um, so that you can have that to re reference back again without having to go back and find it in the video. Yeah, show notes, mommyincome.com slash two, the number two, and not a hashtag or not anything else, just two. Okay, so we're going to talk about numbers, and this is why we're talking about ASP. So this is one of the things that you have to think about with your numbers. If it takes you 15 minutes to package a bundle or, you know, scrape a sticker off and poly bag something, and you make $8 of profit on that item, you're making $32 an hour because it's going to take you 15 minutes to do each one. That's an hour. You're going to make $8 profit on each one. So that's $32 an hour. Not too shabby, right? However, it's not always about $8 is more than $5. But what about if it takes you five minutes to process a bundle or a single unit item or something, and you only make $4 on it? Reality is you can do four times, five times, three times as many on that. You're making $48 an hour. Do your math. So if you can make five, and you can make it in five minutes, and there's 60 minutes in an hour, you do the math. You're making like, what, 48 bucks? So you're making a lot more money because you can make more of those items in that hour. But wait, do you want to make even more than that $48 or that $32? All right, so the first thing, we've been talking about money and the numbers related to money. The next thing we want to jump into is we've talked about how you spend your money. We're going to talk about how you spend your time because time is money how many times have we heard that we've said it many many times and it's true and so we want to talk to you about how you are spending your time so that you can make more profit so if we can look at how you spend your time we can tell what you care about most now I heard this before and it can be pretty convicting sometimes because we don't always spend the time the way that we want to or should or could because we're just selfish human beings in general. Let's be real. When we have a minute of downtime, the last thing we want to do is like, I don't know, pick up the broom and sweep or do something for somebody else. A lot of times we're like, let's veg out. What's on next? Oh, let's, let's go here. Yeah. Let's pick up our phones and scroll Instagram and watch tasty videos. Things like that. <laughs> you know what I'm guilty of? <laughs> um, so the reality is looking at that, knowing how you spend your time, most people think they know, but the reality is you don't really know unless you actually track it. And we've talked about time tracking before, but we're talking about it again because time is money and people want to increase their profits. And one of the ways to do that is to look at how you're spending your time. What is your dollar per hour rate? 
The reality is you don't know what your dollar per hour rate is until you actually track your time, track your profits, and then divide it by the two. That's your dollar per hour. And there was a time where someone came to me after we talked about this probably a couple of years ago. Client called me and said, you're not going to believe. After this last show, you told me to track my time, track my hours, track my profit. She's like, I'm making $4.12 an hour. Please help me. <laughs> I'm like, okay, well, there's nowhere to go for, up from there. I mean, that's less than minimum wage, you guys. So looking at that, she actually did the exercise, and then I was able to help her. How can I coach somebody if I don't know where they stand? At least they did it, and then they were like, gulp. I am really bad at this, and so let's figure it out. So um, we encourage you to track all of your time from the time you get up until the time you go to bed for two weeks, and do this in 15 to 30 minute increments. All right, show notes are wrong. I will fix them. <laughs> it probably will not be right now, so I will make sure that you guys get the right show notes. I have no clue why they're getting the wrong ones, but it's not anyway. Technical stuff, blah blah. Gotta love tech when it doesn't work. But anyway, so I will say that both Kristen and I have done this. Kristen has encouraged me on multiple occasions to do this, and this is not just a one and done. You don't track your time once and say this is my hourly rage forever and ever and always. Because guess what? Life happens, things change, you evolve, your business evolves. My business is drastically different now than it was four years ago. Heck, it's drastically different than it was 12 months ago. So you want to add this to your maybe annual thing that you do to see where you're standing because you really want that, that to, your, your, um, your profit to increase that dollar hourly rate to increase over time. You don't want to continually making the same amount. You don't want to keep making that $4. You want to track those changes and see your evolution. The only way to do that is to go back and do it again. Well, and, and the, there's a method to this and there's a reason to that because we all want to be improving. And you know, if we don't have something to gauge against, you don't know how far you've come. You don't know what you're doing. So do this in 15 to 30 minute increments. Some people find 15 minutes to be too crazy. Um, I feel like I can go down rabbit trails and distractions way faster. So I said 15 minute timers because otherwise I'll be watching crazy YouTube videos all day and then be like, wow, what happened? That means I made $0 an hour because I'm doing nothing but watching YouTube. Um, now, educational YouTube is fine, but, you know, all of a sudden cat videos and America's Got Talent. And um, I like to watch the bloopers of people, like, falling down. And I know it's really horrible. Don't hate me. But it's really funny when people post those videos about, like, watching someone, like, falling or hurting themselves. <laughs> <laughs> when people catch that on video, it's just too funny. Um, so uh, anyway, I ended up watching some of that. Jessica will come home from school and she'll be like, Mom, watch this. And all of a sudden we're watching 10 things. So be honest with yourself. You're only hurting you if you lie about your time or you think you're spending your time somewhere. And there's no shame. We are not shaming you, you guys. We're not judging you for spending a whole day on the couch watching Netflix at all. Or America's Got Talent. Or five football games in a weekend. Yeah, that would... Um, go Chiefs, by the way. Um, sorry, Michelle, your team lost. Not sad. Uh, <laughs> sorry, uh, Michelle is one of our admins, and she's been on our show before, and a good friend of ours, and her team is the Pittsburgh Steelers, and mine is the Kansas City Chiefs, and they played each other yesterday, and our team prevailed. So anyway, um, but whatever you choose to spend time with, go ahead and do it, but track it and then see. Do you have a half hour? Could you maybe watch the first quarter and the fourth quarter of that football game and shove a little business time in the middle or whatever it is? Whatever it is, you have to look at that. And then after two weeks, look for the holes. Yeah, look for the holes. And you might be surprised. We all have 168 hours and you're going to be surprised where those holes are. I always find holes, and one of the things that I've started doing is filling the holes when I'm waiting for the 15 minutes before I have to pick my son up at therapy, or you know, various different waiting in the grocery store line. Kristen sends me an email. I can sit there and read and, and edit the email from my phone. We have technology that allows us to do so much. We, it allows us to waste a whole heck of a lot of time if we let it, but it also allows us to be productive wherever we are. So no matter what, don't make the excuse of, I wasn't at my computer, therefore I couldn't do X, Y, Z. There's always something to do. Heck, if you're grocery shopping, you better be looking at the aisles and seeing what new products are out there and what trends are happening because guess what? There's profit on all those shelves. Yeah, no kidding. And you know what? My husband does uh, product research all the time. He has the TV on all the time. 
but he also has his phone on all the time. He's always doing product research while he's watching TV. He's like, oh, have you seen this? Have you seen this? What about this product? And he's doing reviews and reading stuff and everything else. We can all, you know, it's not necessarily multitasking, but it's sometimes it's getting stuff done even when you think you don't have time. So utilize those commercial breaks. Do what you got to do. Look for the holes, distracting times and tasks. And also look for the things when you're doing. Easily delegating. So when we're looking to increase our time and things like that, look for stuff that we can easily delegate to someone else. If you're sweeping the floor, you got a teenager, they can sweep the floor. They can help you. My daughter helped me wash dishes tonight. Um, my almost eight, well, she'll, she'll be eight tomorrow. And she's like, can I help you wash dishes? I'm like, yes, yes, you can. <laughs> and here's what you're going to do. Yeah, we're archaic. We do not have a dishwasher in our house. I feel like um, washing dishes by hand builds character in teenagers. They hate it, but um, it helps them to, you know, not do things lazy all the time. Plus we have really rusty water and they don't really get clean in the dishwasher anyway. So we hand wash here. Yeah. Um, but you know, it builds good character. And a lot of times we have a lot of kitchen conversations while the dishes are being done. So that's worth it to me. So another thing JJ just asked, do you suggest tracking in a notebook? How you track your time is up to you. Whatever works best for you. Kristen does everything in a notebook. Um, it depends on where I'm at. If I sit at my computer all day, I have a Google doc open where I'll track it. But if I'm out on the road, I always have a notebook. It's much easier for me to track in a notebook than is my phone because it's right there. You're doing it in 15 to 30 minute increments. And it's a lot easier when it's always in your hand, whether you are avid note, one note user on your phone, or you'd rather have a, a written thing down either way works. Well, and the biggest eye opening thing that Amy and I both have found while we've done this several different times this year is realizing we have a lot more time than we think we do. And it's just these little pockets of time that we think we don't, you know, it doesn't mean every moment has to be um, productive. Allocated. You know, we, we encourage each other to do things downtime. Like, okay, you say you don't have time, but you really want to read this book. Read the book. Don't do this or that. Instead, read the book. Don't stay up too late when your eyes are closing, but you just can't go to sleep for whatever reason. Yeah, myself. I like uh, both of us keep myself awake and yeah i do notebooks because then i realize like wow i actually have a lot more time than i think to spend time with my kids or to do leisure time the reality is we push stuff off that we don't want to do so we say we don't have time for it um exercise anyone yeah i don't have time for that yes you do bookkeeping yes. anyone yeah okay so wow now that you found these eye-opening holes in your schedule or things that you know you can do what do we do next with that Oh, I love this because this goes back to the, you remember those numbers we talked about that $48 an hour that we were talking about when you're processing $4 a bundle. Well, what happens if you pay somebody else $10 an hour to do that same task? Well, that means that you're making $38 an hour now to do nothing. Who doesn't want that? I do. I want that. Um, so you you have a bundle or you or an item that you find you're making forty eight dollars an hour on that item because you can make you know one every five minutes for an hour. You're making four dollars on that forty eight dollar profit. Pay ten dollars for somebody else to make those same bundles or that same sticker item or process that same thing. Now you have an hour of your time back, and you're still making thirty eight dollars an hour paying someone else to do it. This is called CEO people. That's what they do. They delegate. And that's what you're doing because you're the CEO of your business. So we really want you to encourage thinking about how you can increase your profit. Yes, we said that. Increase your profit by hiring help. And you're like, but wait, that's going to cost me money. Look at the math. It doesn't cost you. It actually saves you and gives you a raise instantly. You just got $30, $38 an hour for doing nothing but delegating to somebody else. That's a raise. That's a raise. And the reality is, if you think of, I just earned back an hour of my time. I'm going to put my pen down. An hour back of your time. What can you be doing with that hour of your time? Can you be out there sourcing more inventory that therefore you're getting more ROI on? You're having a better profit margin. You're getting a better ASP. All of a sudden, that hour of your time that you're spending $10 for somebody else who became even more profitable because you're finding more money. Heck, you can go do what you want. You can go binge watch Netflix for an hour. You can go play with your fur babies or whatever it is that you want to do. But use that as time to do something that fills you up whether in the money department or in the soul department because honestly if you there that's you're earning that time back. 
Well, and this goes along with last week when we talked about this, you know, your processes. Kathleen, I feel you. I understand. Kathleen in our chat just says, delegating is great, but I stink at it. Control issues. Okay. One of the things that makes delegating easier is having a process in place. And we talked about this last week in part one of increasing your profit. So go back and listen to or watch that episode on YouTube or on our 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 website. We have our blog up that you can watch that there. You can watch it on YouTube. You can listen to it on podcast. Okay. But one of the reasons why we tell you to set up your processes is because once you know exactly what your process is, whether it's written, verbal, maybe you make a video. Amy makes a lot of videos for our VA to and our online business manager to follow step by step by doing something. We make videos for them. We make videos for you guys because it's a way to say, this is our process and what we figured out. And now we're going to show it to you. We're going to teach it to you step by step by step. So when you're thinking about that, Kathleen, and you say, I cannot, you know, I'm, I'm scared. I, I can't delegate. It's most of the time because we have everything stuck in our heads. We don't know how to accurately communicate our process to someone else. And the, the, the quick solution to that is pretend like you're trying to teach an eight-year-old or a 10-year-old or somebody that's like, okay, you can do, anyone can process, I promise you. But if you have to tell them, this is what you do first, this is what you do second, this is what you do third, this is what you do fourth. If you run into a problem or something that you can't figure out, just come ask me. Other than that, here's your job, here's your tools, this is what you do. And writing that down and even having a checklist to make sure they understand. A, B, C, D, A, B, C, D. And then once they do that, they're like, okay, I got this. And if they don't, refer back to A. And so once you know your own processes, you can let go of some of the control because you trained them. They're going to be as good as you want them to be because you're the one in charge telling them what to do. My kids wash the dishes the way I taught them to wash the dishes. And if they don't, they wash the dishes again. And so we go back to step A. So they're only going to be as good as I teach them. And so don't underestimate your ability to teach somebody. You can just say, this is what I do. I do A, B, C, and D. And then I put this over here, put that over there. So it's all about your process first. And once you have that process in place, you can delegate it to someone else. Yeah. And it's, an, it's a, such an amazing feeling to hand something off. Yes, it's stressful. But as soon as that clicks, it's addictive. Ask Kristen. It took, it, she, she, it was a hurdle for her to get over to make that first hire. Um, and once you get that first one under your belt, it's, you, you just see the freedom it gives you. And then it's like, Ooh, what can I hire out next? And it does, I'm telling you guys, it does not have to be something for your business. I hired out my house cleaning because it, yeah, just leave it at that. I hired out my house cleaning. Problems. <laughs> That's why we hire out housekeeping. <laughs> We keep our marriages together by not fighting over who's cleaning what when. Amen to that. Yes. So the reality is it doesn't have to be outsourcing something that you're uncertain of in your business at this point. Pay attention to those things where you do have process and start getting familiar with your own process and spend some time outsourcing things that are outside of your business that give you more time to work on your business. If you're spending three hours a week scrubbing your bathrooms, find somebody else who can come in with a team of four people and they can do your entire house in an hour. Yeah. And by the way, um, you're worth more than that task. So, and it doesn't mean that if someone cleans houses that they're not worth more than that. I'm not saying that at all. I'm saying that if you're a CEO of your business and you're trying to run a more accurate business, someone else loves cleaning more than you. And your job is to run your Amazon business and those people like cleaning. That's, I, mean, I know people that love cleaning. My mother loves cleaning. My sister loves cleaning. My son loves cleaning and he's thorough and he takes his time. And I'm like, oh, just, you know, play some bleach or something on it and hope for the best. Like, I don't enjoy that at all. So where there's some people that do, and so that's for them, and it's okay for you to hire that out. But if you're worth $48 an hour, you shouldn't be doing $10 an hour work. You should be doing, you know, at, at the beginning, we know we're CEO and janitor, and sometimes we have to do the cleanup. But the other time is once you get to a point in your business where you can do that, you need to be doing tasks that, um, that make you more money. And doing your house cleaning might not be that. Might, it might, maybe that's relaxing for you, and that's fine. You, I don't like it. But either way, you can hire something out, and it's totally fine to do that. There's many things to hire, packing and shipping, back-end tasks, like 
clearing up your inventory, your damage reports, your, you know, what to do with your return items, negative feedback, seller central issues, wholesale vendor management, inventory management. Yes, we hired these things out this year. It's so freeing. I can't even tell you. <laughs> it is amazing what hiring out. Yeah. I don't even know. Um, we have that somewhere. Maybe we'll give it to you in the link in the show notes. Maybe not. Um, but we have a hire, how to hire help workbook. So if you're really ready for that, um, you know, we have a way to, you, that you can hire, a, you know, we have a whole workbook we put together for that. That's not really for this show, but if you're interested in that, come to the Facebook group, let us know. We can't dig up the link at this time. We can Mommyincome.com slash team. See, there you go. Mommyincome.com slash team. How to hire help for your business. Um, we put this thing together for you. We have so much stuff, you guys. It's ridiculous how many, how many things we put together for you to help you in your Amazon business. Um, so Ellen is asking, how do you hire to fix pictures? It really depends on what you're looking. If you're looking for basic background removal, go to pixels, P-I-X-E-L-Z.com. Um, if you are looking for something more as in bundles and layering stuff together, look at Fiverr, um, look at places like Upwork to find a designer who can help you with that. Um, I know that some people who are doing it en masse, who do a lot of it, go to places like Design Pickle and pay a flat fee for the month. It's not cheap, but if you do not have a skill set, you can make things happen if you don't have the time to manage people to do it. We can tell you that Fiverr, we've had some good experiences with people on Fiverr who literally you just basically say, I need these five pictures to look something like this and they'll send you examples and you can approve or disapprove. And I'll oftentimes they'll do 20 for like 10 bucks or something. So yeah, it costs you $2 a picture, but if you're creating a bundle, you're hoping to sell it over and over, right? So it's worth paying two bucks to get the picture done. Um, just letting you know. And if you are creating a bundle that you don't plan to sell over and over again, please come talk to us because we want to help change your thinking. Um, I have a dear friend of mine who, when I first met her, was going to Marshall's and buying things and creating a listing that she could sell three of and could never replenish. So we want to be able to help you find things that you can sell over and over again, especially if you're going to put the legwork in to deal with keywords and creating a listing. We want to make sure it's something you can bring back time and time again. Yeah. So seriously, um, we have some final thoughts and with our final thoughts, um, it's going to be time to put your big girl pants on because, um, we're going to be real with you. Big boy and girl pants. We're not going to make the, boy, we're not going to make the boys put on the big girl pants. <laughs> hey, whatever works for you. <laughs> oh boy. Seriously though, like we have these thoughts and you know, you guys know that we're fun and we're loving and we're make jokes about each other all the time. But we also will get in your business. And we're going to get real with you and we're not going to sugarcoat anything. This business cannot properly grow without investment. Okay. So you have to invest both time and money, even if you have very little of both. Sometimes it requires more money. Sometimes it requires more time. But what do you have more of at this moment? And paying attention to what you, what you have more of is what these steps that we just talked about in this episode can help you do going through and doing those actions, knowing what your expenses are, doing your budget, and then doing your time tracking will help you really understand what you have more of in your business. Now, don't come to us and say you have no time and no money, but you want to grow a business. Get real. That doesn't <laughs> happen. You can't, you can't, you can't have it all. Um, yeah, I do too. I don't have any time or any money, but I want to sit on the beach all day and read books and have somebody fan me and bring me foo foo drinks. Um, not going to happen. Not today. Not anytime until you can pay for that. Whether it's paying for your home, paying for people to wait on you, whatever it is, you might have all the time in the world, but then you're not going to have all the money in the world. So we have to get real if we're going to make this happen. So the question we want to ask you is what are you willing to give up to gain? more of what you want. You've got it. Even if you have a little bit of both of time and money, you've got to be consistent, whatever it is. So yes, I started with a hundred dollars and some books in my house and a flip phone with ISBN numbers, IBSN, whatever they're called. I always screwed that up, but 
that's literally how I started. It was no excuses. It was no, I don't have a lot of this. I don't have a lot of that. I did what I could do. I had two little kids at home. What was I going to do? I did what I could do. So what are you willing to give up? What are you willing? No one likes the word sacrifice, but we have to bring it up because in order to accomplish goals and realize big dreams, you have to make some sacrifices. Oh yeah. Does anybody follow Dave Ramsey? Anyone say amen or something. Let us know. Um, he always says to live like no one else. You have to live like no one else now so you can live like no one else later. So right now when he says that it's all about sacrifice. He says, you know, it's kind of extreme, but you know, he'll be like, Hey, get two, three jobs to pay off your debt, to pay off your house, to save money, to make sure you have a nest egg, to make sure all these things. But then all of a sudden when all of your friends are still working till they're 78 and they can't retire in that home in Florida or wherever else they want to be here, see the world because they don't have any retirement money is because it, while you're living high on the hog, because you are responsible in your working years. So it's one of those things. What is it that you're willing to give up now? in order to gain what you really want in five years or 10 years or 15 years. This is why we have talked in many episode about dreaming big and putting those thoughts out there and really understanding so that you can make those sacrifices now so that you know what you're working towards. You know what you're putting that time, energy, effort, and money about. Okay, so I have to, I, I love Kristen's comment in our notes because she's like, how many times have I had to walk, pair, pa pa walk past a pair of shoes that I really, really want, not like she needs them because she's got a closet full of them, but that she walks by because that's a, that's filling something that she wants now, but she's got a much bigger goal down the road that surpasses her need for that pair of shoes. She might dream about that pair of shoes and she might, you know, have to click some Pinterest things to figure out how to find a way, maybe. But in reality, if you're working towards something bigger and it's always in front of you, then it gives you that ability to put those, what you feel like you're, you're immediate needs <laughs> to the side. Do you need that Starbucks coffee? Um, think about it or from those shoes. or those shoes. I know I'm serious. It's, you know, it, it's the struggle is real. You know, it's like you have to be disciplined with your money now so that you can like retire like Kings and Queens later. You know, like Dave Rams is always talking about that financial piece that he teaches or whatever is really like that doesn't come you know, just by, you know, buying everything you want, not having discipline. I know these aren't sexy words, budget and discipline and sacrifice. And, you know, you guys are rolling your eyes probably. But the reality is we got to where we're at right now because we gave up a lot of stuff for a while. And now we're living a little bit larger than we were before because we gave up stuff then. We, when we were first beginning Mommy Income and building this stuff up from the ground, we worked a lot of hours for a very little profit. You know when Mommy Income first started? And tune in. Make sure you're staying around because next month is our Mommy Income birthday bash show that we're having. And it's going to be fun. We're going to have a blast. We'll give you more updates on that later on. But literally, it took us, like, for nothing. For a year, I did shows for zero money. No opt-ins, no freebies, no anything. Just pure information, hour after hour, week after week for zero dollars. You've got to put your time in somewhere and eventually it will pay off if you're consistent and you're dedicated. The sacrifices will pay off in the end. I love what Kathleen says over here. I always used to try to give it a day to rethink a purchase. Often it didn't seem so important later on. That is so true. Um, if you are on Facebook at all, you know that there's ads that pop up in your feed all of the time. How often have you clicked through and be like, oh, I really, really want that and I want to buy it right now. If you take that time to think about it, you're less likely to make that purchase down the road. They will pull you in. They've got all their sales and marketing tricks up their sleeve. Trust me. <laughs> Yeah, and so, you know, it's one of those things. For many years, we've heard, you know, our friends and family even said, I don't see you anymore. You don't hang out as much as you used to. And, you know, passing up the pair of shoes. We've got to make choices. Amy and I both just bought new cars. But how old were our cars? We <laughs> drove and drove and drove our cars until they were, like, so embarrassing that we were like, okay, I guess 
factories to buy a new car. Why? Because we kick the can down the road a little bit more to invest a little bit more in our kids, in their educations, and a little bit more in our own business education and going to some conferences that we really need to go to to up our game and our education. So we gave that up. Instead of having a new car, we're like, oh, just one more year. And Amy told me, Amy got her car before mine. And she's like, um, when are you going to buy your new car? Because that's pretty bad. <laughs> It was bad, you guys. It was, it was, it, yeah, it needed to go. <laughs> yeah. So, you know, it's just one of those things that we, we still, that's still a sacrifice. Just because I could have afforded a new car two years ago, I didn't jump right on it. I'm like, let's make this last just a little bit longer so I can put a little bit more money in the bank so that I can help my kids do this and that. And, you know, I'm thankful for that, but it wasn't always that way. We had to um, make a lot of sacrifices to get where we are and we're still making some. Um, so it's just one of those things that you can do to end that. It's this time, this is money, this is how to increase your profit. That's what this show is about. Making a list of little things that you can sacrifice in order to build a life that you want. Just the little things. Maybe we're not asking you to give up your Starbucks forever, but maybe give it up once a week. Maybe give it up, um, you know, maybe you eat out five times a week and maybe you can eat out three times a week instead. You know, I don't know what it is for you, but I'm telling you those little sacrifices and just investing a little bit more into your time and money into your business, you're going to start seeing those rewards and it's going to be worth it in the end. Yeah. And we want to help you gain those rewards because we love seeing those moments when people go, I did this and this is what happened. We love when those stories get shared in our Facebook group. We love getting to enjoy those steps. And guys, it doesn't matter how small you feel that step was for you. Any step that you take in the forward direction is a big step in your business. I, we want to celebrate every little step with you because they are big. So if you're not part of our Facebook community, come over to mommyincome.com slash join us with the code word part two. We'd love to have you come into the group and share your stories, share your excitement for every single step. We had somebody post in the group today that they just got everything set up and ready to go to send in their first shipment with five items. You know what? Five items is a shipment out the door. So many people don't even get to the point of getting that first shipment out. That's a huge win. We know what kind of a hurdle that can be for so many people. We are so excited that they can get that next step moving on in their business. We want to help celebrate yours as well. Now, tonight in tonight's show, we went over a lot. So if you didn't grab the show notes, go to mommyincome.com slash the number two. And you can grab those show notes so you can have that. Also, we did have the Profit Now workbook. Go to mommyincome.com slash profit now. You can download the workbook so you can work through seeing if you are a profitable business, going through your budget, seeing what your expenses are, figuring out what your dollar per hour rate is. So you have all of that information so that you can then figure out your time and your money, and your ASP, and what you're willing to give up to get more of that. Um, and, you know, we want, we encourage you to share, you know, a lot of times, you know, come to our Facebook group and just share something. We'd love to hear your comments after the show and let everybody else know that, you know, hey, I, you know, I, I got the profit workbook and I realize I am profitable and I am doing this right. And, you know, we want to pat you on the back. We want to help you with that. And if you're falling short, we want to help you with that too. So, you know, be championed by other people. Go into the Facebook group and share your struggles and share your wins. And, you know, that helps us push forward as well. We're not saying spend all of your time in Facebook. You guys know that, you know, we're, we're not in there 24 seven either because, you know, we have husbands and children and family and friends and two businesses and a partridge and a pear tree. So <laughs> we're not always on Facebook either, but we want to encourage you to just stop on in every day and say hello and share a win or share a question or post a funny meme about something. Cause I always love those. And, um, you know, just to share, we want to be able to help you, but you know, share how you're saving money or what you found that you can make sacrifices to do. And we want to cheer you on with that. And also talking about sharing. One of the best things that you can do to help us is to help us share what we know with more people. And the best way you can do that is sharing our podcast, sharing our Amazon file shows, sharing something that you've learned from us, letting other people know in other groups. That this is a place where you're hanging out, where you're getting great information because we want to help other people. Our goal in all of this is not to make millions of dollars. That would be a nice side benefit. Our goal is to help people. We want to help people grow their Amazon businesses. And we've seen 
So many of our students take amazing leaps over the past couple of years, and we want to help you and people you know do it as well. Yeah, so like and share and comment and give us high fives and thumbs up. And, you know, if you're in another Facebook group and they ask about who you guys listen to and follow, it's okay to mention us. We're not shy. It's okay. Oh, we appreciate that. And we appreciate you, you know, leaving comments, listening to the podcast, subscribing and downloading. Of course, don't forget the email list. Tomorrow, something special is coming and you don't want to miss it. Mommyincome.com slash subscribe to get over there and um, hang out with us there. We love you guys. We're so glad that you're here. We have something special for you next week, as always, um, coming up. And there's going to be a third part of this increasing your profit. So stay tuned for part three. Um, and then we will see you again next week on the Amazon Files. Take care, everyone. Have a great night, everybody.